Hey folks, so for this video I wanted to discuss Sean Lane's discography. I've been collecting and listening to Sean Lane's music since maybe about 2006, 2007, somewhere in there. Um, I don't think I have everything, but I've got pretty much all the big official releases and a couple other odds and ends that nobody really talks about. Um, so yeah, I guess let's just get started. I'm going to go through in more or less chronological order on these, and I'm not going to talk about bootlegs, I'm only going to talk about, um, for purposes of this discussion, we'll just say official releases. Um, I don't know, if this video goes over well enough, if enough people like it or are interested, not completely bored by it, I'll maybe do a separate one talking about bootlegs, because there's a lot of great bootlegs out there. Um, okay, so... As a lot of you probably know, Sean started out playing in a band called Black Elk, Arkansas in the 70s. As far as I know, there's no official releases from them. Uh, there are like some bootleg radio broadcasts and concerts and some video footage that you can find on YouTube that are all pretty, pretty awesome. Um, but no official releases. So, in between Black Oak, Arkansas and the release of Powers of Ten in the early 90s, a lot of people kind of gloss over that and don't really talk about it because he didn't actually release an album under his own name up until that point but he did release some was on a few releases so did sean put out anything on vinyl like uh, powers of 10 no as far as i know no but he is on this u.s metal volume 4 on the i think what would later become the shrapnel label i think this might be on legato but um uh, this is from Mark Varney. This is basically a compilation of a bunch of shred metal, uh, not Metallica, not Judas Priest, not King Diamond kind of sounding people. Um, I didn't really recognize any names on here, but if you check out, where is it? On side two here, this track, Stratosphere 2, is like a two minute guitar solo from Sean. Um, Probably the most overtly metal or neoclassical metal sounding stuff he ever played. Um, from what I've gathered, he didn't really want to be pigeonholed as like a shredder, like an Ingve Malmsteen type. Although if you listen to it, you can you can hear that he could definitely have pulled that off if he wanted to. Um, yes, yeah, so this is an interesting release with some really ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous album artwork. Um, I don't know if you can see, but each of the soldiers on the back is supposed to be like a little caricature of like the uh the bands or guitar players that are featured on here it's just a compilation really um yeah pretty ridiculous all right next is highwayman 2 which uh is kind of a super group with uh chris christopherson waylon jennings willie nelson and johnny cash um sean basically did like a did this as like a studio musician and you can kind of hear him featured throughout um little background things or some rhythm guitar work he does get a couple solos here and there but they don't really go for you know longer than 15 20 seconds this is a really commercial sounding kind of country rock record um what's kind of interesting to me at least for it is you'll be like kind of listening to it and you're like yeah okay this is you know it's a country whatever and then you'll hear guitar and you immediately know from the tone and from the note selection that it's Sean. So it, it's just kind of fun in that regard. Because <laughs> you could you could hear these on the radio and then all of a sudden you just kind of hear a solo and you're like, I think that's Sean. And then he'll play like some kind of, you know, they kind of, you know, let him go off right at the very end of the solos. And like he'll do some crazy Sean Lane run, but then it, it cuts. So it's like right as you think you're going to hear him start going, he just kind of does that to end it. So... That's interesting. <laughs> Next we've got uh, Centrifugal Funk from MVP, the Mark Varney project. So this is from 91, I think, just before Powers of Ten. And this is one of those kind of, let's get a bunch of crazy guitar players together on one album with a bunch of backing tracks and just let them kind of go for 10 minutes albums. Uh, the playing on here is ridiculous it's worth it just kind of you know to hear sean just blowing over all these crazy backing tracks you've also got um 
Frank Gambale on there. Who else is on here? Uh, I mean, Frank Gambale's the main one. Uh, oh yeah, Brett Garset as well. And, uh, yeah, So What is pretty insane. Hey T-Bone. I mean, yeah, it's all, all good Shred Fest kind of stuff. Um, there are a couple releases of this. I believe this is the first release because it has a track on here called Lane Splits, which is only a 39-second thing. And if you were just listening to it, you'd think, oh, cool, they gave Sean a little bar solo. Um... From what I've gathered from, I think specifically an interview with Richard Halabeek that Sean did where he was asked about it, uh, it really isn't what it seems. It's actually uh, Mark Varney tricked Sean, in, uh, this is according to Sean Lane's account, he tricked him when and was recording Sean warming up trying to get like a guitar sound. So Sean didn't know he was being recorded, so it's just him playing like a bunch of exercises trying to, I guess, find... The right sound on his pedal or his amplifier or whatever it is so sean really hated it <laughs> according to the interview um and thinks that it was just a total like really embarrassing cringy thing i don't know i i think it's kind of cool like at least for us you know the people who are total maniacs about this and want to hear like everything he recorded so yeah i mean it's interesting just for that so if you're gonna get this one sorry for the glare if you're gonna get this one uh, look for the version that has uh, Lane Splits on it so you can get everything. Because the, the other version doesn't have that on, on there. So that would be tracks, track number 7. Yeah. Okay, next. Finally, <laughs> Sean's first solo record, Powers of Ten. Yeah, if you don't have this, uh, try... I mean, if you don't have the money to get a physical copy, because these usually go on eBay for, like, I think I got this for, like, 50 bucks or something, which that's that's kind of kind of cheap. A lot of people are asking upwards of, like, $60 for one of these. Sometimes I've seen them on eBay for, like, 80 or 90 bucks. Um, anyways, yeah, this is a great album. Uh, Sean, if you don't know, plays all the instruments on it, um, and... I think it came out in 1993. Uh, no, 1992, sorry. And so a lot of the electronics that he and keyboard effects that he was using, I mean, it might sound kind of dated now. Um, to me, the difference between an album like Powers of Ten and like the Mark Varney project with all the sequencers and um, backing tracks, you can really tell that Sean on, on this, he was really... Uh, using the keyboards and the different uh, MIDI instrument settings as a as an orchestrator, so he, a lot of the parts are really kind of intricate and well orchestrated, well thought out. So it really, in my opinion, doesn't sound it, it doesn't sound super dated in a bad way. It's more like I can tell that he made this in the early '90s. But you know, it's it's really amazing what he was able to pull off. Um, I mean, not again. Illusions, Get You Back, West Side Boogie. All these are fantastic. Um, the two uh, classical pieces in the middle, The Powers of Ten Suite and Piano Concertino, e these are, you know, kind of out there as far as the rest of the album goes, sort of um, instrumental classical pieces that kind of show off his keyboard playing skills, sorry, piano playing skills, because Sean was an amazing pianist as well as guitar player. Um, Paris is just kind of a crazy <laughs> jazz excursion and then yeah every track on here is, is great and worth listening to highly recommend getting this if you don't have it um i if you can't afford to get a physical copy go for uh you know trying to get it on itunes or somewhere like that so you can at least just listen to it um i'm sure you could just listen to it on youtube for free too um I have, I believe that this is the, the first version, which says on the back, produced and arranged by Sean Lane. There is another version. Um, after this album came out, I guess Warner Brothers decided for some reason to give Sean some money to re-record and remix the album. And so there's another version that says produced by Sean Lane and Andy Johns. I don't have that version, but um, the versions of... Get You Back and West Side Buggy on there are um, completely re-recorded and produced by Andy Johns. 
don't know who Annie Johns is, producer for like Led Zeppelin, Van Halen, a lot of different people. Um, and if you've seen on YouTube the footage of Sean in the studio recording Powers of Ten, it's not him recording this version. It's him with and in the studio with Andy Johns doing those tracks. Um, and there's an interview with Sean too from a Q and A. I'm I think it's from one of the AIM clinics, where he talks about how he actually prefers that version because he got to remix everything. So even the parts that weren't re-recorded, he remixed them and liked that version better, at least at the time of that interview. So I don't know. I I haven't been able to find that version. I haven't I haven't even seen it on eBay. So from as far as I can tell, that version's kind of rare, um, but I can't really tell you like a track by track comparison of the two because I only have this one. So, yeah, just a thing to be aware of. Um, okay, so let's see. After Powers of Ten, you've got uh, Sean Lane partnering up with Jonas Helborg, who's an amazing uh, bass player from Sweden, um, and pretty much. From there on out, uh, the main releases are going to be with Sean and Jonas doing a, just a huge, amazing, <laughs> I don't really, I'm running out of words to describe it, but <laughs> uh, just an amazing run of these uh, Jazz Fusion records, starting with Abstract Logic. Um, this is with Kofi Baker on the drums, who is a uh, Ginger Baker's son, and uh this is like a remastered release. I'd recommend getting this because you get um, three extra tracks uh, at the end of the album, and each one's a solo from one's from Jonas Selborg, and one's from Kofi Baker, and one's from Sean playing on uh, piano, which is just totally insane. Um, but yeah, th this is an aw awesome record. Uh, what's interesting is you can hear uh, kind of this in between period where Sean is trying to play a bit more structured and uh, composed and less free than what he ended up doing later on. So it's this weird kind of mix where he's playing more like how on, how he is on Powers of Ten without going completely bonkers like he is on some of the later ones. Um, don't get me wrong, it's still crazy, but it's a bit more structured. Um, and when you hear, like, uh, Rice with the Angels is on here, for example... If you compare the version that's on here to some of the later versions, like on um, Persona or in any of the bootlegs, it, it's definitely a lot more like slower, and they're kind of like you know figuring it out and stuff. And uh, but it's just interesting to hear the evolution from this one going on to the next ones. So yeah, this is an awesome album. Uh, somewhere between <laughs> Powers of Ten. And going off with Jonas Selborg, uh, Sean had some kind of falling out with uh, his label Warner Brothers. Um, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but uh, there's a, a cl another uh, clinic with Sean that you can find on YouTube. I, again, I think it's one of the AIM ones where someone asked him if he's going to do a follow-up to Powers of Ten. And at... Somewhere in the mid '90s, he did re he did record a follow up. He did a you know another album and submitted it to Warner Brothers, and they rejected it. So I'm assuming that's what later would become Tritone Fascination. But um, Sean got stuck in this position where he was signed to Warner Brothers and had recorded an album that they weren't going to release, but. Um, he still had to do work as a musician, so, you know, he was able to, um, as per his contract, he was able to work with other musicians as long as he was the sideman and it wasn't under his name. So that's why you've got, this is, you know, Jonas Helborg, but Sean Lane is, even though he, you know, plays a really big part in it, it's, he's credited second or as a guest musician, and it's not under his name. So that's leading to this next one, Two Doors by Michael Shreve which was originally a double album, although it's all in one CD in this version, um, which is with uh, Michael Shreve, who was the drummer for Carlos Santana at one point. And here it's it's a lot of, you know, what Sean and Jonas ended up playing on some of the later releases and all through the, the touring in the 90s. So you've got, you know, Stellar Rays, which is also called Time is the Enemy on some tracks, and Deep Umbra, Baragi, um, 
And yeah, this is a really, really cool album. I didn't get this until fairly recently, but yeah, really, really cool stuff. Um, just, yeah, more of the great fusion playing that we're going to be talking about in a second. <laughs> so, you know, moving on, second release with Jonas Helborg, Temporal Analogs of Paradise. This is amazing. Um, I'm going to keep saying that, but <laughs> this album is, it's two basically 30 minute tracks or just about 30 minutes. Um, and from what I what I can tell from the recording process, it, it's basically, it almost makes me think of like a Miles Davis record from the 70s where there, it's, you know, Jonas took all these recordings that they had gathered while they were touring and it's a mix of um, them playing some things that they had worked out beforehand and some of them are strictly improvisations. And it's all edited together in post-production so each piece flows into one another it all feels like what each track feels like one long continuous 30 minute performance and it, it is just fantastic um this is also the first record where uh sean started playing with jeff sype if you don't know who jeff sype is uh he started playing drums with uh, colonel bruce hampton the aquarium rescue unit he's gone on to do all kinds of great jazz fusion stuff just one of the best drummers around um, and yeah, this, this is the chemistry between the three is amazing on here and continues to be on any, any recording I've heard from them really just, yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say about this. Definitely pick this one up if you don't have it. Uh, you can just put this on and yeah, <laughs> just flow with it. It is so, so amazing. Um, there's a lot of great. Uh, build up to in, t in intensity and then it'll kind of back down for a bit and just kind of be a you know nice relaxing sort of uh, interplay between the musicians and then it builds back up it is just I don't know what else to say just get get temporal analogs of pa paradise for sure next uh, fission by Jens Johansson um, Sean Guest guests on a few of these tracks uh so does uh mark stern or sorry mike stern who's also a great uh guitar player um this is just a lot of really crazy keyboard and drum stuff and <laughs> uh if you don't know who jens and anders johansson are they're the uh keyboard and uh original keyboard player and drummer for ingbe malmstein so i mean these guys are just insane um there's it's uh, it'll be like you know crazy classical inspired kind of stuff and then it'll just go off into total like free insanity and uh yeah th this is definitely interesting um copies of these are kind of hard to get um i think i ended up paying about 30 bucks for that one but if you want something a little bit more experimental um i would recommend checking it out and sean's only on i think like maybe three three tracks it's really like a, a guest feature kind of slot but definitely cool Another one with Jonas Helborg and Jeff Sype, Time is the Enemy. This is awesome. Um, this is more, feels like they recorded some stuff live, and this is just like the best of the recordings that they had. So it's not all edited together the way Temporal Analogs of Paradise is. This is more just like, these are our six best live tracks. Check them out. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. I'm trying to look to tell you what the highlights are, but really every track on here is, is awesome. But uh, Time is the Enemy at the end is just totally insane. Um, the second track, Wherever You Walk, is one of my favorites. It It's kind of a bit more low-key, but then this last, like, two minutes, it just kind of builds up to, like, this kind of ZZ Top boogie sort of feel. It's just really incredible, the interplay between these guys. I mean... Again, I, I've listened to, on, of course, on all the official releases, it's amazing. But even when you hear bootlegs, it's like, these guys, it almost sounds like they couldn't they couldn't make a mistake if they tried. Their chemistry was just so amazing. Their playing was just so tight, all three of them. Anytime, you know, Jonas might just start playing a bass line, and then Sean and Jeff immediately pick up on it. Or maybe Sean's playing some noodle, and then the other musicians pick up on it. It's just... They just had complete faith and trust in each other. At least that's what it sounds like. And yeah, just time is the enemy. <laughs> Pick it up if you can. Uh, Zen House. This is another one with uh, 
this is probably the the most kind of different from uh, the other releases between Jonas, Sean, and, and Jeff Sight. It's all acoustic, and it's all it was all from what I what it, I can tell from the description on the CD. It's recorded in this little uh, art studio, and it's just Sean and Jonas playing some really kind of quiet uh, acoustic stuff with Jeff Jeff just doing just really subtle percussion work throughout the whole thing, and um, yeah, it's al almost kind of like acoustic ambient music i don't even know if that's a thing but yeah it's just kind of it's good to just kind of put on and just kind of chill out uh to listen to and it all builds to uh this last track on here uh of course it's called conclusion which is just some really really intense stuff um but yeah th this is a really different album um i would recommend i'd recommend checking out all these really but yeah, definitely expect expect something a little different. It's not like the electric fusion sort of stuff from before. Um, this is really a mellow and subdued album, but if you're in the mood for it, definitely worth checking out. Okay, another one where Sean is more in a background sort of situation. This is Parker Card and the Sideman Syndicate. Uh, I think Parker Card sounds like he was a musician who was in Memphis, which of course that's where Sean's from, so I'm assuming they met up just from playing that same scene. This is a lot of uh, rhythm and blues kind of stuff, really, so it's kind of cool to hear Sean on here. It's a similar situation to the Highwayman 2 album, where you can just kind of hear him in the background at times, and sometimes they give him a solo, and he plays some really blue. this is probably the bluesiest kind of stuff he plays which again it's just a testament to his virtuosity he could do total crazy fusion out there stuff he could do blue stuff he can eventually we're going to get to you know he can do middle eastern indian inspired music so yeah this is a smaller release so it might be a little bit harder to find online um and i i picked this up and the few the fission album with jens johansson i picked both of those up on ebay for 30 bucks each so, I mean, if you're a completist, yeah, it's worth checking out. It's definitely interesting just to hear Sean in all these different contexts. That, that's how I look at it, at least. Um, here's another one where he's more of a guest or featured musician. Mood Du Jour by Doug Scarborough. Uh, Doug, Scar Doug Scarborough was also another musician that uh, he played keyboards with Sean when Sean was touring for Powers of Ten, so you can see him in a lot of that footage and you can also hear him on the powers of 10 live album which i'll get to in a little bit um this is more of sounds like doug trying to do almost like um folk pop kind of stuff um it's more kind of mainstream sounding and again it's just interesting to hear sean on on in that kind of context you could have just kind of put him onto any sort of project and you would have done something totally amazing just mic him you know <laughs> um next sean finally was able to put out the tritone fascination i don't have an actual real copy i got this this is a burned copy i got this from uh diane lane a long time ago off of the website um which you can see she wrote hope you enjoy this diane yeah, so that's really cool. But at one time, they were she was selling uh, stuff on on their website uh, because I, I there was some kind of drama surrounding the uh, the release and them not being able, the Lane Estate not being able to get lo royalties or something. But this is a really also great album. Um, I have no idea how different this version is compared to whatever Sean submitted to Warner Brothers in the early 90s after Powers of Ten. But there's some really, just a weird mix of stuff on here. Um, it, it feels kind of like, you know, he got the tracks together and was able to release them. I, and the ordering is kind of strange because you got some really rocking stuff in the beginning with like Kaiser Nan Caro, Peace in Mississippi, which is just this heavy, 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 Jimi Hendrix tribute, which is incredible, um, and you know, stuff like that, and then in the second half, it's just a lot of kind of slower ballad, 
uh, piano driven work, which I'm not I'm not saying it's bad at all. It's just kind of interesting how the album is structured that way, but definitely interesting in comparison to Powers of Ten. It's more a lot more like live instruments and uh, kind of rock sounding stuff, in my opinion. Um, so it's not as heavily orchestrated with the keyboarding like uh, Powers of Ten is, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> Powers of Ten, Tritone Fascination. Definitely get these. Um, I think you can get actual copies of this on eBay now for, I, I think, maybe 15 or 16 bucks. So this is definitely easier to get than Powers of Ten is. Going back to releases with Jonas Helborg, we've got Good People in Times of Evil. Um, this is with uh, the first time that they played with Selva Ganesh Vinayakram. His amazing uh, Indian percussionist. Um, so this is like the first real um, overt foray into uh, playing more of an Indian style of music, um, which is what kind of Sean's whole trajectory sort of built up to, you know, started out playing rock and more jazz and fusion kind of stuff, very Holdsworth inspired. And then by the end, he's just playing um, stuff that was, you know, he's playing with all these great Indian musicians. Um, so yeah, this is the first real uh, step into that direction, at least officially. I'm sure you can find uh, bootlegs of him playing with these musicians beforehand. But yeah, definitely some really cool stuff to check out on here. Um, this is uh, Powers of Ten Live, <clears throat> which was recorded during the Powers of Ten tour, but not officially released until much later. I also purchased this from Diane back like over 10 years ago um and this <clears throat> just an interesting tidbit this cover here is what Sean originally wanted to be on Powers of 10 it's taken from a documentary called Powers of 10 which um is sort of a scientific short documentary where it zooms into a uh, it zooms in at different magnitudes of 10 until like somebody it's like a couple sitting at a park and each shot is a different magnitude of 10 zooming into them like with like a uh what is it like a molecular microscope and then the second half it zooms out into outer space so this is like really far into the person at like you know molecular level and then on the back you've got it out into the milky way galaxy so that's where the whole powers of 10 name and concept comes from also uh, clearly a double play on you've got ten fingers so you know the powers of ten or ten powers of ten I, I don't know but <laughs> anyways if you and then again if you go into the booklet it it's showing all the different images from the movie of them at the molecular level and all that stuff um, anyways to the music itself this is the first Sean album I ever got because at one time <clears throat> again over like 10 years ago this was probably the easiest one to, to track down <clears throat> and it was all all of it is um most of it's from the i think the git uh show that sean did although there are definitely some tracks that are not from that because on the git show um there's no saxophone but you can definitely hear todd bobo on sax on a lot of these tracks I have no idea if it was overdubbed or if it's a mix of recording it's probably just a mix of recordings but yeah, definitely check this one out. Um, you've got a lot of different tracks from Powers of Ten on here. Plus, you've got him doing um, a cover of Black Market by Weather Report. You've got an absolutely insane drum and guitar solo where he just goes completely free jazz kind of with him and Sean Rickman. Um, and then <clears throat> you got a really cool song on here called Hard Case, which also is on Tri tritone fascination but that that's just a probably the the you know closest to heavy metal or you know heavy metal jazz fusion that he got to which that is just really cool so yeah definitely uh pick up the live one another one with jonas helborg persona which i think most of these come from uh live tracks that were recorded in the late 90s again with helborg lane and scythe um this is just a i i kind of think of it as like a sequel to time is the enemy it's just the same kind of setup where it's just probably what they're what they consider to be their favorite live tracks on here 
Um, and yeah, this just more amazing playing from, you know, the Hellborg Lane and Sype trio. Um, real highlight for, I, I would point out on here is, um, the second track, Rag BB, which is, I would say the definitive version of Baraji. Um, it's a 20 minute version, which if you don't know, Baraji was, um, I think it was, it was a song that Jonas and Sean wrote that is based off of one of the, uh, Indian Ragas. And most of the time they play it in, you know, kind of a similar way live. And usually they jam on it for about 10 or 12 minutes. This one is just, the beginning is just so incredibly atmospheric. And the build up to them playing through the rog is just incredible. And just, there's a lot of um, dynamics in this version of it. it. It's just, yeah, just check this one out. <laughs> and then uh, the final release with... Uh, Jonas Helborg is Icon. Um, this is kind of a sequel to Good People in Times of Evil, except um, you've got uh, Uma Mahesh Vinayakram doing vocal work on here. So this is the first time that you get to hear Sean playing with a Indian vocalist and not just a percussion player. And it just his playing is just incredible on here. You can tell he's doing it all directly from the voice now. Uh, so. Um, his playing is just completely evolved at this point from where he was on, say, Powers of Ten or even, you know, some of the earlier, uh, Hellborg releases. Um, no real traces of, you know, the Blues or Holdsworth. It's almost all just this style that he derived from listening to, uh, Middle Eastern and Indian music, where it's all kind of coming from the voice, so there's a lot of sliding and almost, almost fretless sounding stuff on here, and he's using a loop pedal throughout the entire thing to simulate like a droning effect it's yeah this is a just awesome awesome album um yeah i'd recommend that one for sure uh this isn't you know an audio album but this is a dvd paris which is a a live concert featuring uh, all the same musicians on that previous one uh on icon and yeah really cool kind of packaging you can find most of this on youtube i think so you know you can check that out um before deciding to make your purchase it's all in you know his later period stuff where it's very much middle easter inspired like you know he's not playing anything from powers of 10 on here but um definitely a lot more of the uh uh vocal inspired playing and uh using loop pedals and all that kind of stuff so yeah this is a really cool one and then for his last two releases, North Mississippi All Stars Polaris, um, just kind of a kind of basic southern rock kind of sounding album in my opinion. Um, it says in the notes that he's on here. I don't think that they really. I, I don't remember hearing Sean soloing at all on here, which it, which is fine. You know, it's not his album, but he's just one of the many guest musicians on here so i don't know if maybe he helped with some of the arrangements or if he's playing rhythm guitar on some of these tracks but yeah it's not bad but it's just kind of you know i got it because i'm a completist i guess and then this one i think was released just before shortly after sean died but we've got the richard hallaby project i think i'm saying that right um and this is again similar to the uh, fission album uh, where you've got Sean and uh, Brett Garced, and they just kind of got some got to do some solos on some of these uh, tracks that Richard Hallabeek had uh, had created for them, not for them, but you know he he was having them guest on some of his tracks. So Sean doesn't play on everything on here, but he does get some solos on some of these, and um, it's just again more more of his later period playing. Um, by and large, I feel like a lot of the playing on here sounds from uh, Halabeek and Brett Gar said it sounds very, very Holdsworth. So when Sean starts playing, it's just kind of like like you just kind of realize how unique of a player he was because it just sounds totally different from from what they're doing. So it's a good mix of stuff, and I feel like the interplay between the musicians on this is is a lot um, better than something like MVP or on, on you know on Centrifugal Force where. That really is, it's some backing tracks that they're just kind of playing over in post, so. 
So yeah, definitely an interesting one. And that's all I have as far as the official Sean Lane releases go. Um, I hope maybe there's some of these that you haven't heard before um, or heard of before. So again, I would definitely recommend checking out the solo ones, which would be Powers of Ten, Tritone Fascination. From there, uh, definitely check out Temporal Analogs of Paradise and Abstract Logic. And then from there, just get all the stuff you did with Hellborg. That, that, those are the key. And then from there, everything else I would say, you know, just go for if you're if you're a completist and laniac like like I am. So, <laughs> anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and hope maybe you learned something new. Um, if you like this video, you know, leave a post in the comments. Talk about you know maybe what your favorite Sean Lane albums are, or maybe what some of your favorite um, live performances from him are that you can find on YouTube. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it.